All right, let's do a recap of what we learned last week. So uh, two methods of saving in uh, ZBrush. You first method, you can save it as a Z project file dot ZPR file from file, save as. Okay. The advantage is that you will save the entire project with all the settings, including the camera, lighting, materials, textures, everything in tech. Okay, so uh, make sure you off the undo history though, because it makes the file a little bit too big. Okay, so I prefer to always off my undo history. Okay, so that's your first method, ZPR file. The second method is you go to tools and you press uh, save as, and then save as a .ztl file, z2 file, which you just save the current model itself, which with uh, also contains all its sub tools, so it's kind of like the same. Okay, you don't need to worry that your different layers in uh, ZBrush might not be safe, or your Z2s are safe at the same time. Um, it's more lightweight, and then uh, it's actually kind of straightforward. So uh, this is also a very good method of saving. Both methods is very good. And then the difference is that the ZTL, you may need to go in and out of the edit mode to make it work. And then the ZPR file, you will already be in the scene itself. So it will already be in edit mode. Okay, so uh, save both of these from time to time. ZBrush does crash quite often sometimes. Uh, so you do need to save both and then the files may get corrupted. So it's great to have both versions from time to time. Okay, next, uh, somebody asked last week, uh, Smooth brush and H polish brush seems a little bit similar, okay, but it's quite different. So if I have a textured ball like this, if I were to use a smooth brush, the results look like this. But if I use a H polish brush, the results can look like this, and then it will be a little bit more polished. I can make it uh, more hard surfacey. Okay, so uh, I'll do an example. So I open up uh, this Dynasphere over here, and I'll just pump up the Dynamesh resolution. I use my number 8 brush to create some textures, change the alpha to add in one of these alpha that is very big. And I can change the alpha again to add a different set of alpha. Okay, so we can actually add textures very quickly. So I'll just quickly use shift. Shift, the result looks like this. Shift, when you hold down shift, uh, it's to smooth on your model. And you just smooth it out like this. Okay, so you can see that it kind of retains the same shape, but it's become smoother. But if I were to use say number two brush, number two brush will actually push it in and then and then it, it kind of flattens it out. It flattens the edges more. Okay, so you can make more hard surface uh, uh treatment with this. You can uh, change the silhouette of your model more, and uh, you can make it more look more like a football. It's actually changing the whole sphere, as you can see. So the difference is pretty big for these two. Okay, so uh, another one thing for you to know, uh, if you want your ZBrush buttons to look a little bit smaller, some people have uh, feedback to me that the interface is a little bit big. And if you want the text, the uh, buttons to be a little bit smaller, unfortunately, uh, I think uh, the best recommendation I can say is to go to your desktop, uh, right click, display settings, and then adjust this uh, scale and layout of your windows to be a little bit smaller. You can, uh, you can bring down the recommended size or the smaller size that you can see, or you can change the resolution of your windows as well, so the size is a little bit smaller on your computer. And uh, of course, uh, for 3D softwares and for ZBrush, things like that, uh, we recommend a monitor that's a little bit bigger, maybe 20 inch and above, that would be uh, really good. Okay. So uh, just for your information. All right, see you next time.